power band. Neither team going to be picking that one up. And I've said this before, but it's that jungle position that really changes so drastically. Jungle and top lane change so much these days between solo queue and the professional environment. So Xerath will be the ban against Tank. Really hasn't been one of Nogne's choices. Typically we see the LeBlanc ban come again. I expect to see it again. Yeah, Nogne with a little bit of a grudge match, I suppose you could say, against his former team. Did play on Najin's sword back in the day. Indeed he did. Well, KT, what is their final ban going to be? I would assume KT wants to leave the Lissandra up. That has been a, a top performer, at least, for their roster. Yeah. And nope, I'm okay. wrong. Well, Lissandra banned out. And some questions have kind of popped up about Duke, because he is a great top laner. But he really did, you know, that, that Nar was a very good pick for him. And how is he going to transition out of the Narless meta? Well, he's been great on a variety of picks. His rumble is really excellent as well. I assume they're probably going to be gunning for it. Yeah, it could be. The, their first round of the draft, and that'll be Ari taken out. OK, yeah. so basically, Nagne's performed very well on Ari and Lissandra in the last game. Now, these are unavailable to him. His Kassadin performances haven't been great. His Orianna play has been mediocre. His Azir play has been mediocre, so where are they going with it? Are we just going to see Corky first picked in all of our games tonight? Probably. I wouldn't be surprised at all. It's such a strong pick for either team, and it doesn't really tie you down to too much. Jarvan Thresh looks like will be the pickups for Najin. Picks going pretty quickly for both teams. We'll see what KT's second round is going to be. Well, so far, this is actually an identical draft to CJ versus SK Telecom game one. Looks like it'll change up a little bit here, though. Lulu and Janna. No need to really take your support at this stage of the game, and especially combined with a Lulu, that doesn't give you a lot of ambiguity for as much as you would like, maybe yeah. flexing it into the support position. I, interesting. I really think Duke is going to play Rumble in this game, and I'm curious what Someday has lined up against it. Someday... I'm, I'm feeling a Hecarim here, man. I'm mean, feeling the Hecarim, in, it's coming. If they lock in the Lulu, I'm feeling Hecarim. It's starting to look pretty interesting. Okay, so it's going to be a mid Ezreal. And then I would imagine... Oh, we'll see. It could be a support Lulu. Could be. Yeah, it seems like KT has put a lot of their cards on the table right now, though. A bit of, you know, a little bit of mystery here. That Lulu could go. Najin could just run Lucian Thresh bottom. right now and yeah. have a pretty good time with it. Also, remember that OQ and Kane ran that Callista Thresh lane to great success up against Corky. Very true. Managing to easily snowball out of it. Now, whether Pure can duplicate Kane's laning performance We'll have to wait and see. But that has really worked out for them in their last match and led to a resounding victory. Yeah. So. Callista. Really? Karthus. Interesting. Again, you know, we haven't seen a lot of games. Out All of right. Tank. All right. Karthus in the mid lane. Awesome. I like it. So, Karthus is the first time we've seen him since Easy Hoon played him in the preseason. Yeah. Now, how is this going to match up against an Ezreal, though? That's the that's the question. I feel like it's going to be... Well, as long you know, as you can stay behind farm. a minion wave, you will be able to farm relatively well. Yeah, and you have the exhaust there. for any all-ins. You also have that great uh, global ultimate against the back line of a double AD carry composition. This is a very fragile comp that KT is trying to run right now. Yeah, it is. As they lock in the Janna, and that Janna's not really going to help them in terms of disengage, but may be able to pick up a little bit of healing when the Requiem comes in. Now, what do you think about this Lee Sin, too? Because when you look at who you're going to be kicking out of the team, or, you know, preferably into your team to blow them up, Thresh, maybe not ideal. Jarvan, not ideal. Karth is certainly not ideal. And Callista, you know, if her support's in range, can bring Thresh right in there. So, I don't know, what do you think about that Lee Sin pick? It seems kind of risky when you think about the team fights that might ensue here. Yeah, it may very well be. You're not going to be insecting anybody here. I think you're just going to be kicking Karthus away. I think that's what Lee Sin's going to be for. 
Yeah, that. well, you always have that option too, which is really nice because if you can kick him out and kill him with some more long-range spells, then he's not going to be able to do much yeah, to your team the, during his passive. This plan. And Aurelia. Ooh, all right. I like it. Yeah, we have not seen as much Aurelia as we've kind of been expecting to see this season. Still a very strong pick, but one that hasn't been used really that much in Korea lately. Yeah, has been used very extensively over the rest of the major regions. Yeah. Uh, particularly in China, actually. China just adores Aurelia at the moment. I believe uh, Kube, the most prolific Aurelia user in Korea, and he hasn't been really the best top laner. So I'm curious to see what a player like Duke can do with the pick right now. I, I'm very excited to see Duke on this champion and what exactly he's going to do for, with it. They have a strong front line. They've got great backline assassination too. So a lot of threats on Najin's team. I think they're trying to divert some of the pressure from OQ right here. There are so many priority targets on Najin's team composition that OQ may have a, quite a bit of free reign into who he's going to be auto attacking. They have some good engage as well onto the double AD composition. This is a interesting comp from KT Rolster. It will be pretty yeah. delicate and kite oriented. They have a good mix of AP and AD damage though, but KT is going to have to play very tightly with this poke composition. And that's not something they've been able to do, play extremely well as a cohesive unit so far in this season. Yeah, they'll certainly need to uh, keep things a bit more together if they're going to beat Najin in this crazy comp that's coming out. Let's get the game and see if they can do it. And here we go. Welcome to Summoner's Rift, KT Rolster versus Najin the Empire. And Najin, they were so close to Team Undead. They could have just had Hecarim top and a Mumu jungle. <laughs> they would have had Team Ghost or Team Undead. A Mumu is not really a ghost, I suppose, but I'm disappointed. It's legit, man. Could have played the zombie brand skin as well. Yeah, that's true. Or uh, zombie Zyra as well. Oh, yeah. nice. Scion nearly qualifies. Not quite, though. Yeah, he does. He's undead. Yeah. yeah, he is undead. He is, is, he is, he is he? undead. Is yes, he? he's a zombie. I think he's kind of just like a rebuilt warrior that, uh, I mean, he becomes undead when he dies and then comes back. Yes, so that is saying, the definition of undead. But he do, that doesn't happen until he dies. So you're saying when that happens, he's no, double he, undead? No, he, yes, he is double undead. <laughs> when he dies and comes back again, he's double yes. undead. Yes, he so is. you're saying he's already undead. Yes. Twice the undead for Scion. <laughs> All right. Lore expert Monte Cristo. He already is dead. <laughs> and he becomes undead again. See, this is why he just doesn't work. There's too much there's too much controversy over his status of, of undeath. I say just go with the Hecarim and Amumu. Team undead. It's the best. Well. Too bad Nemesis mode is, is gone, although I wouldn't want to give my opponents that, though. <laughs> I gave my opponents Team Bird once, and that didn't go well for us. <laughs> Swain, Anivia, Quinn. <laughs> Fiddlesticks because he has Crow Storm. Yeah, there's one more, but I can't remember off the top of my head. Oh, Azir, of course. And there we go, just the single Sentry Golem start there yep. from Najin. And otherwise, we will be dealing with standard lanes right here. And Karthus shouldn't have too much of a problem farming up against this Ezreal. Nope, shouldn't be too bad. Spamming the lay waste from the, safe, the relative safely, safety of behind the minion waves, so. Yeah. Tank! It's all caps now. <laughs> Tank! I wonder if he's the Cowboy Bebop theme song. Yeah. Or if he... It's a great, that's my favorite tank. <laughs> really, that's your favorite tank? Even better than real life tanks? Yeah, absolutely, man. Yoko Kano and the seatbelts, you can't beat that. <laughs> Even a Sherman or a Panzer can't beat that. Nope, I don't think so. We're blown away by musical sound waves of awesomeness. Of jazzy goodness. All right, well. Yeah, I think Arrow and Fixer are gonna have a little bit of a hard time in this 2v2. Oh, unless Pierre walks in. There we go, and Destin is, oh, oh, barely misses Arrow. 
that would have been very dangerous. It still is. Arrow, nice he has flash. to flash. Use that summoner heal as well to ignite pop by pure, but one summoner for two, I'd call that worth it. And look at this, Peanut lurking there right around the side. He's oh, got to get coming him. in, that's right. Arrow getting very low now. A shield from Jada comes in again. Can he survive? No, first blood going to OQ. Fixer trying to equalize, but he just can't do it. Ignite, not enough. Not a lot of respect there for the possibility of that gank coming Whoa. in. No blue buff on to Peanut, but he set up really nicely there. Great reaction, and again, Peanut coming up with the first blood. Yeah, Nog, uh, the Najin really making their presence felt already, and it's a very, uh, you know, we said it before in their match against SK Telecom, they look like a very different Najin team than we saw in the first half of the season. I really do wonder why KT didn't lane swap here. It does yeah. seem a bit disrespectful. You know what OQ is capable of in this matchup. You, we've seen it. I mean, and it's not like Pure is any unknown, you know, support either. He's been solid in the matches that he's played for Najin. So, I, I agree. I think there's a little bit of cockiness, maybe a bit of disrespect in KT. Certainly paying for it. Not only that, but Arrow just going for the long sword. Meanwhile, Vamp Scepter for OQ, so. Yeah. Pretty good advantage developing already. And the last time this happened, it totally just rolled SK Telecom. Well, the last thing you want to do is get a Callista going early, but that's exactly what KT is doing now. And Najin just has such a great individual playmaking ability that even through their pretty lackluster ability to close games yep. and their relative paucity of wards, they still can just face roll you if they get enough kills in lane. That's even right. if you're Faker. Apparently so. That's the scary part. OQ is just such a threat at this point in time, and that's why we saw in the third game of that series, SK Telecom just straight up banning Callista. Yeah. Death sentence on the arrow. OQ takes some damage, but it's going to be a lot of bursts. OQ may be going in a bit too far here. Shield comes in from the W for pure. Yeah, did not use that summoner heal still. Yeah. Just very knowledgeable about his limits, and he was yeah. trying to bait them in with the summoner heal right there and oh, then finish the job. That's right. He can come back up with that Vamp Scepter really quick, as we're seeing here, and a potion score coming down to sort of shore up that bottom lane. KT needs it. Well, and this has been Score's problem all season. His lanes, all his lanes start losing, and then he just... What do you do? He goes into lane triage mode, and then he becomes very predictable. Yep. And we see him lurking around the bottom side. We'll be... Providing a little bit of backup there temporarily. Clears out a ward, but beyond that, it's still OQ turning up the heat, getting that big CS advantage. And Arrow just not able to do much right now. Yep. Pure looking pretty solid, too. Picked up those boots on his back after getting the assist okay. for the first blood. You know, will be seen by the ward. Yep, came in a little bit too early there. Oh. Trade's really not going to do anything against that Vamp Scepter first, though, so. Nope. Not at this point. All they're going to do is maybe give Fixer some more money. That's about it. Which is the worst thing. Okay. Well, now they'll back off. We'll see if they want to do anything with this. Pure certainly has a lot of opportunities to roam at this juncture, and Tank just farming his heart out in the mid lane. And you know, part of this too, though, I think, is that since a lot of these Ezreal bids, in fact, all of them, go for the tier first, you really do have a lot of farming leeway mm -hmm. with the champion like Karthus that has those short cooldowns on the lay waste just to zone out the Ezreal, because you're probably not going to get hit by an auto attack. You're definitely not going to get hit by an auto attack without trading in response, because the yeah. Q is always up pretty much on Karthus. And then, the other side of that equation is if you just stand behind the minion wave, you're not going to get hit by a Mystic shot. And he doesn't have combat stats early on into the game. So Karthus, a champion who does need that ramp time, who is vulnerable in the laning phase, there's there's not a lot of options for Ezreal to poke him down. And the all-in pre-6 isn't very strong either for Ezreal. Yep. And if you put a ton of pressure on the bottom lane, then uh, Score's going to spend a lot of his time there. And yep. Not in the mid lane trying to get a game. And the scary thing now for KT is that with Requiem up and the bottom lane winning, there's a huge potential for a Requiem dive in the bottom lane to 
just continue furthering Oku's advantage. Oh yeah, that's the thing, is that like, with the poke that Oku and Pure are getting, onto Arrow and Fixer, you could just see that happen really at any time. And what's been quietly developing up in the top side too is a very large CS lead uh -oh, for Duke. Oh, Arrow gets caught by the death sentence. That's an easy kill for Pure. Ignite. Just pop that Ignite. Man, the Ren damage helped out. OQ uses the ult there, brings Pure behind the turret. Fixer taking a lot of damage, and there's a Requiem. Can he survive it? No, and Tank picks up his first kill of the game. Score over the wall. OQ may be taken out here. Will Score gets the execute. We'll see if he manages to pick up the double. Uh, looks like Pure trying to dodge that Q. Peanut there anyway, so just one kill in response. And like you said, Score playing triage. Now someday coming back in the lane. He had to ult himself against Duke. Nice Glitter Lance auto combo to bring Duke down a bit. But yeah. Dodgen still firmly in the lead here. Duke still has his ult up though, and he, so he can heal up on the wave if necessary. Yep. And he'll just pull back and go for the freeze right here. Use his, nope, oh, nope, just gonna try and push it out now that Lulu's gone. So let's take a look at this again. So Pure and OQ walk up. There's a quick Q onto Arrow, wow. and then Arrow, great hook from Pure. Yeah, I really am surprised the minion didn't catch that one. And there's the Ignite to finish it all off. Yep, wow, he uses him to bring the Lantern in too. Wow, Pure and OQ playing so well underneath this turret. <laughs> <laughs> OQ, oh, the man, banner this laugh. guy banner laughs people all the time. He was just spamming Kog'Ma taunt in the game the other day. Yeah. It hasn't always worked out for him. You know, in fact, every time I think OQ does that, he ends up dying. <laughs> he gave That's Faker true. the first pentacle of the season. He was slash laughing under his Nexus turret after Faker picked up a Quadra on LeBlanc and Faker just dove him and killed him for the Penta. That is true. And in the last game, too, they played against SK Telecom, he was spamming the Kog'Ma taunt at Dragon and ended up <laughs> ended up losing the game. And this time giving a score, the <laughs> first, first kill. Yeah. yeah, giving the first kill of KT over to score. Yep. Duke. All right, someday taking it's some no damage. Wild coming in, there's Pure as well, trapping in the Cataclysm. He's no dead. flash available. Goodbye, Lulu. True Shot Barrage drops by to say hello, but no real benefit from that for KT. OQ well, already 1-1-2. One, one, and two. I mean, yeah, Najin seems to be already running away with this one a little bit. Yeah, and but their warding still isn't quite there. Finally, Pure and Pina trying to get some more deep wards into the enemy jungler, but yeah. still lagging a little bit behind in that regard. But this is looking like the same Najin we saw the other night. Uh, capable of winning lane very hard, uh, also under warding. And we'll see if they complete the Najin trifecta with delaying the game by being overly aggressive. Massive for another, throws in the end. Yeah, for another five to 10 minutes because they mess up oh, their timing. Throwing him in, knock up on Fixer. There is the ultimate from Pure as well. The box goes down and no escape for Janna. Didn't even bother burning that ultimate. Wouldn't have done him, maybe would have done him a bit of good there. Hmm. Actually, yeah, that may have saved him if he would have ulted, but. Well, no Tank was already on his way down too. Yeah, it's true, so. I guess. But I think. He's already poked pretty hard. Okay. Well, trying to steal it with True Shot Barrage and the big one, not going to work out. Not going to be able to steal a dragon against Callista. The rend goes through. So what is Arrow going to do now? This is a very dire situation for KT. Score will try and do something on the other side of the map, and that something is taking some Raptors, but well, it is a small reward. Another something to keep in mind is that uh, Tank was able to get a Rod of Ages at like nine minutes. No. Got it very, very fast. That is a great point, Doa. Yeah. Well, this oh. card, this is going to be out of control pretty soon. That's a, a triple Doran's ring start for someday. Well, he's getting bodied in the top lane is the problem, yep. so he's trying to do what he can, but Down especially... 40 CS at the moment. He blew his flash and his, uh, his uh, wild growth thanks to getting outplayed by Aurelia. I mean, KT just can't handle any of these, these matchups that Najin is throwing at them. Makes you really wonder why they didn't lane swap here. Yeah. I mean, if someday is going to get wrecked by Duke's Aurelia to this degree, and the same thing's happening in the bottom lane for them, a uh, lane swap would have definitely been in order and helped them to buy some time until Corky could ramp up in power. Corky incredibly far behind in this game right now. Yeah, Oku decided to go with the Bloodthirster yeah, first build this. again on Kalista, and again, he's, he's got a big lead, so why not? Yeah, I think it's very strong with Oku 
just because he does get these massive kill advantages in the lane. Yeah. And it just allows him to be even more of a bully with the sustain and the shield that it provides. There's almost no downside to trading at that point, so he can just continually pick away at the enemy's HP. Here comes a true shot barrage, not going to hit anybody, but it does clear out the minion wave. You see everybody trying to use that true shot barrage now, like uh, Fakers are doing it, just to get damage in on the lanes. Yeah, well, the, the tier of true shot barrage user usage so far in mid-Ezreal is Faker, GBM, and now Nagne so yep. far. That's right, oh, Duke is gonna get an easy kill onto Someday. Yeah, Someday really getting beaten up at that point. Burned his flash there, too. That was a great mechanical gank by Peanut, actually. Yeah, the flash, get. the cataclysm. Not bad. This is really good. Peanut and is Duke's really good. follow-up, too, not even having to use a flash of his own. Peanut is just so good at ganking. It's very difficult to get away from this guy. Well, he is coming out of the solo queue, ganking his life. The harassment of Someday continues. Oh. <laughs> Duke just walks past the turret. It's like, hey, Someday, I'll, I'll come back and kill you again later. <laughs> We're not through yet, Someday. <laughs> Enjoy your turret while it lasts. Well, hard to see KT winning this one. Uh, not only because of the gold deficit that they've already fallen behind with, but just because the gold that they do have is invested in items that are either going to take some time to ramp up, like the Monomune or just a bunch of Doran's rings. Yeah. And this the the power spike is all oh, but gone here for KT as damage well. On the fixer. When you run a composition like KT's running with double AD, you have to abuse the siege potential in the mid game. And we talked about this before, but one of the big pitfalls is if you lose your outer turrets first and you have to start overextending, God help you. Because there's no safety anymore to Siege, and the teleport flanks will be coming in. You will have too far to run, and you will get locked down and destroyed. Yep. Pretty much. Looks like an easy bottom turret for Najin whenever they feel like taking it. Just killing as many minions as they can, just wasting as many minions for arrow as possible as well. Just trying to maximize that advantage. Peanut has now decided that it's right. time to walk around in the enemy jungler. All right, Fixer Fixer. wants to 1v1 him, I guess. Flash, alt. Oh, oh that was really close. <laughs> Actually held that monsoon for exactly the right amount of time. If he had I let it go so, sooner, yeah. then he would have certainly died right there. But I, You know, I, I, I wonder how much of that was a bit of an accident, too, because he had to stop it early to flash away from Peanut as well. Najin's wards are significantly better in this game. Yeah. Duke farming serenely up in the top side. Score not willing to go in on that. I mean, there's no follow-up. Duke is uh, two levels up on Someday right now and has a Trinity Force, so there's no way they could probably even 2v1 that realistically. He would at least escape and maybe kill one of them even without his flash. I mean, Duke's kind of the uh, sleeper so far of this game in that you know, we haven't seen a lot of him, but when team fights start happening, he is oh, going to wreck yes. people. He is a very, very large threat. Yep, and uh, looks like Tank almost done with that death cap as well. Which is good because Karthus could use a, use a nicer hat. It's just kind of a hood right now. He's very fashion conscious for an undead guy. Yeah, you know. You have to draw attention away from your skeletal corpse if you're that's, undead, you know. That's, that's, that's how you maximize your attractiveness. See, the undead don't really have the best skin, so you, you compensate for that by <laughs> Having really great clothing. <laughs> Debonair Karthus incoming. <laughs> yeah. so, Najin looking for dragon number two. As Tank will happily lay waves to this blue buff. And Peanut actually has a sight stone this game. That is great hey. too. All right. Hey. Nice. Congratulations, Peanut. You've taken your first step into a larger world. <laughs> And Najin has distinct ward advantage. This is actually a very, very large change in just one series. Yeah. If you go back and watch that other game, their warding was pretty awful. Yeah, it was. And with as good as they look despite that, too, it, it really makes you wonder how good this team is possible of, to, uh, you know, to be with good warding and all those mechanics that they've been showing. Like, this... If you had the nameplates turned off and asked me what team this was, I would never in a million years say Najin. Yeah. 
I would, what would I say? Oh, I would say watch out. Someday trying to seal with the Glitter Lance. Can be done, but not this time. Another dragon goes to Najin, or uh, yeah, that was their second, yep. Well, at least they traded something for it, KT. Moving into the top lane, trying to just get a little bit of farm and pressure on, considering that OQ is such a menace right now, but someday can't stop them. The problem is, is that KT doesn't have a way to defend their side lanes, because both their side lanes got smashed. Would it be weird if I would say the way that Najin is playing right now would remind me of uh, SK Telecom with Easy Hoon in mid. <laughs> Yeah, a little bit, yeah, for sure. I can see that. Uh, Garth is coming in. Yeah. I don't know if Marin would play the Aurelia so much, though. Yeah, that's that's a thing. I think he could. Be unlikely. Either way, the point is, is that I wouldn't say it was Najin. <laughs> well, there we go. Uh, tier 2 down, so Oku has brutally pushed his lane to the limit, and with the wave reversing as well, he will just be able to sit there and farm. Yep healthily and safely under his tower. And it's not going to get better for KT. They're going to get outscaled in this game. They've got four people down there in bot right now. They really want to make a play. They have to do something. They're trying to use the power spike that they have yeah. in this game. Well, they're going to lose their mid lane turret, possibly, if they do this. Let's see. Uh, Nagne has True Shot Barrage up. He could, in theory, use it on the wave. Yeah. But instead, he will allow his turret to fall. Not sure about that decision. Maybe saving it in case they would need it in the fight in bottom, but it just did not work out. Well, I'm not justifying it. I'm just saying maybe it's a reason. They, uh, well, now they're going to lose two towers. So by by backing off at that time, I, they knew Duke was topside. Yes, he had his teleport available, but if they had been able to keep the pressure off the mid lane turret and reverse the wave a little bit, maybe they could have sieged down tier one in the bottom side. I think it was a mistake for them to just back off in the way they did. And now, I'm going to try and farm out his Wolves, but this looks back. KT may have had that great series against Genera, but this is back to old KT, where they would just kind of roll over and die. Yep. Which is what we saw from CJ earlier tonight, so it looks like this may be the evening of no resistance. It's just like National Give Up Day if you're one of the teams, <laughs> I guess. Oh. Well, there's a red buff for Nagne. Nagne actually managed to steal that one blind. Nice. That was blind, yeah. That was very good. That, so yeah. a minor victory. Yay. <laughs> With a 5,000 gold deficit and a... Well, he has a Muramana now. He's going to be doing a little bit more damage, but he still needs to do quite a bit more if they're going to come back against Najin. Najin, you know, like you said, they've been really doing a good job of warding. They've already got the start of the wards they'll need to keep control of the Baron area. Looks like Duke may be going straight into a GA here. Or Zerat's portal. We can help. Oh, yeah, dude. <laughs> I'd love to see that Zerat's portal. Ultimate split pushing Aurelia. Yeah, sure, why not? Pretty sure it's GA, but we, yeah. can, we can hope it's Zerat's portal. That's what I'm holding out for, Doa. We've only seen a Zerat's portal built once as a as sort of a troll <laughs> thing, but it was still cool. On a support cool. player. Yeah. Still cool. I just get my hopes up every time now that I that I see the start of what is probably a JGA, but just has that outside <laughs> shot of being a Zerat's portal. Yeah. Because I just want the glorious age of split pushing to come back. I want Aurelia with Elixir of Ruin and Zerat's portal for maximum split pushing ferocity. Dude. A man can dream. It's true. Is this what you dream about at night? That's right. Zerat's portal and Elixir of Ruin. I'm waiting for it, Doa. Zerat's portals dancing through your, your head. Little voidlings prancing around. Yep. Now we know. A glimpse of the mind of Monte Cristo. It's all strategic. Strategic split pushing. Oh, four man here in the middle. Not just going to have a difficult time sieging with this competition, though. They pretty much have to split push this game out. They don't really have a lot of tools. Yeah. To well, maybe it is a Zerat portal. But. Actively deal damage. And they could just 1 3 1 all day right here with Karthus yeah. uh, just holding waves in the mid lane. And then Duke and Oku. There's nobody who can 1v1 them right now, so kind of why not, really? Yeah, they can also just kind of 
rotate around onto turrets too, I suppose. Not they walking really far up right there. Does get a Lulu shield at the end. And Arrow looking to clear out the mid lane. He has an opportunity, and everybody just backing off. So Najin needs to be able to fight around some of these objectives like Dragon. So they, yeah. they'll force it right now. They can't apply too much pressure, but they've dodged most of the threat from KT's composition right now. Nagne decided to go for the Iceborne instead of the Trinity Force, giving him a little bit of extra kiting potential and survivability, but <laughs> all the items coming so late, that is a sneaky crab. Hard to hit the Rift Scuttler with lay waste sometimes, yeah. And you'll notice that he handed the crab over to Peanut. Yes. And for those of you in solo queue, give the crab to your jungler. Do not take the crab. This is a public message for everybody. The jungler gets 30 extra gold off of the crab. Don't take the crab. You're just costing your team more gold. Yeah. And it really makes junglers angry. You wouldn't steal a car, would you? <laughs> so don't steal 30 gold from your jungler. Don't steal a crab. You wouldn't rob a bank. <laughs> don't pirate that 30 gold from your jungler. You're only hurting yourself. That's right. It wasn't as Rob. Though. No, it wasn't. It was a GA. <laughs> oh, well. If he gets another Negatron Cloak, <laughs> then, then maybe. Said they're just going to get another dragon. This is going to be dragon number three for Najin the Empire. Easy dragon, easy life. Okay, well, I think that uh, nobody should be early picking Corky without banning the Callista. It's certainly starting to seem that way, isn't it? Duke coming in on the Someday here. Someday has his flash. Can he get away, though? I don't think Duke even really cares about the kill at this point. He just wants to keep that lane pressure up. Especially against Najin, too. That's the real kicker here. Is I, I, against Najin, you shouldn't do that. In fact, we saw SK Telecom do that. They were like, Oop. Oh, you took it. Oh, what a jerk. He was right there, man. No, he wasn't. Oh, Someday. Forget about what I just said. Watch the action. <laughs> Wild growth on Someday. <laughs> it's okay to take the crab if your juggler's see, not there. He's right there, see? <laughs> oh, loaded up, ready to fire. They get the knock up on the Nagne. The arcane shifts away. Ooh, you're taking a lot of damage. Arrow, though, getting blown up completely. Tank picking up that kill has not even needed to use Requiem just yet. And here comes the Baron attempt. It will be very rapid with the Karthus. Yep. And the Aurelia, they've got so much damage to lay down onto this thing. Yep. Well, Duke's wow. not even going to go there. He is just going to zone him out on the outside. Uh, he's just going to 1v3 for a little bit. He's like, no, I don't even need this lantern. Haven't you seen my items? Whoa! Two kills coming in for Nagne with that true shot barrage. Here comes Requiem. Can it set things up? Double kill, actually, now for Nagne. Triple, Triple kill, kill, make that. Uh oh. Uh oh, uh, this was a bit overly bold for Najin, Nagne. It was the old Najin, let's extend the game for another 10 minutes. Yep. <laughs> yeah, well, that's, uh, that's Najin for us. That's our Najin. <laughs> da -da 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 -da. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's they could do it quickly, but they also have that issue of well, having they, no tank. So they started out the fight with uh, not a lot of health on some of their champions too, so at least Duke, he got the Baron buff. Yay. Well, Duke here did blow his GA in the meantime. There's one pure. and a two. <laughs> he actually nearly stole the Baron with I know, that, yeah. <laughs> that was a little bit too close to comfort if, for comfort if you're a Najin fan. There is the Suicidal Requiem. He probably should have just flashed over the wall before doing that, but yeah. you know, whatever. Well, you know. YOLO. His name is Tank! He can stick around in the fight as long as he wants to. <laughs> it really is a bit uh, a bit bold to give yourself, uh, give yourself an, an ID with all caps, you know? <laughs> Who does that? You think it, it's too much? The, yeah, a little bit. The ID scream? Yeah. I don't think we have any other Korean players who do that. I mean, uh, GBM, that's his initial. Well, no, but so that's that an acronym. Count. Yeah, well, that's what I just said, yeah. It's the only one who comes close, really. XD, I suppose. But <laughs> that's just an emoticon. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, man. I can't think of anyone else. That's about it. No one other than Tank! <laughs> well, here comes the split push from Aurelia as Duke builds into that Randuin Zoman. Are we really capable of stopping him from doing this, especially with a nice empowered minion wave right there? Yep. 
So the slow death of KT resumes, even after picking up a triple kill around the Baron pit for Nagne. Rajan really does enjoy torturing their victims before either losing or winning. No, it's all about giving them just that tiny shred of hope to hope crush torture. their spirits later. Yes, hope torture. Yep, that's right. They really need to rename themselves to uh, Hope Torture, Hope Torture Empire. Hope Torture. I, I almost the, became like a <laughs> 1930s <laughs> newsboy there for a second. Is that the Brooklyn? Hope Torture. <laughs> is that the Brooklyn? The it's classic not, Brooklyn accent. Hope Torture. Yeah, I guess so. I don't know. <laughs> It just happens sometimes, you know. My previous life as a 1930s <laughs> newsboy. It's pretty boring. <laughs> oh, two shot barrage, and Duke manages. Did you implore people to read all about it? I did. <laughs> I demanded that they read all about it. X3, X3. <laughs> Uh, we have fun when the games aren't. <laughs> yeah, tonight hasn't been the greatest series, has it? No, not really, no. It's been pretty one-sided. Three out of the four games, at least. It's OK. Tank is here to farm the entire Tank. jungle. Look out. It's a two-headed wolf. <laughs> the Reaper does not fear yeah. the two-headed wolf. But does KT fear the Reaper? I don't know. I think they should at this point. Yeah, they probably should. They're not Blue Oyster Cult. That's true. They don't fear the Reaper. <laughs> and they would prefer that we do not fear the Reaper as well. Oh boy, something fishy's going on in the bush. Nope. I guess they're giving that gank up. It's all about the dragon now, Doa. Number four. Yeah, Karthus kind of does his little like, hand flourish whenever he does lay waste. I kind of feel like he should be saying, ta-da, every time. Magician Karthus. Yeah. He waves his he waves his arms and your entire team disappears. Yeah, that's just true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's exactly right. Why why isn't this been a thing, man? Another great skin idea from Don Monte Cristo. It's been a little while. Yeah. Ta -da. Oh. Well, KT. Are we gonna see a bit of a fight here? Nope. No, well, not until okay. the dragon. Okay, well, the dragon's up, and will Najin be able to claim their fourth one? Yes. Duke ready. Well, thank you for wrecking it, Hype Wrecker. <laughs> Look, they just got the dragon. Isn't that great? Wow, four dragons. <laughs> Thanks a lot. <laughs> I can just do the play-by-play -play casting in advance for you if you want, though. <laughs> I, I appreciate it, man. Sometimes that might not be a bad thing. Thank you. Well, this mid turret looks like it could be in some trouble. Nope. Oh, well, arrow. They've got some good pokes here. I think they are going to be able to take it, but they may lose an inhibitor turret for it because uh, Duke is just there. going nuts on it in the bottom lane. They have sent Someday back, but Someday not the strongest choice right now. Well, they buy themselves some time. They lose half HP, but that'll regenerate slowly, yep. as it were. Nine Duke will teleport out, actually. Oh. So it gets a little bit worried that KT's going to collapse on him, so decides to just to take the safe method of heading back into base. Funny thing is he could have just walked into mid lane and gone through that way. <laughs> well, he didn't know. They don't have any wards over there right now. Yeah, Only three wards on the map for Najin, so the their, their ward game is uh, starting to shut down a little bit right here. It's dropping off a little bit, but this has been the, the problem with Najin, you know, any roster, uh, is that they've really kind of gotten sloppy in the late game with also, not only their decision making, but their warding. Also, there are no circumstances really or nearly none that you need three oracles lenses. <laughs> Much better to have, or like, and five, five lenses total, but three of them upgraded. Yep. Probably better to have, uh, I don't know, a ward totem or a scrying lens, <laughs> they're a scrying like, orb or something like that. They're like, we're not going to have any wards, but you aren't either. <laughs> nobody has wards. Wards for nobody. So it's a new strategy from Najin. Yep. No one gets to see. No one gets wards. <laughs> Nine sweeping lenses and one scrying orb in this game. <laughs> Nobody gets vision. Everyone face checks, pushes 100% of the time. Sounds great. New meta, or old Chinese meta. One of those. Yeah, that one's been around for a while. Yeah, that's true. It's not in Korea. It's the longest lasting meta I think that I'm aware of. No word. 
OMG is still on that meta today. That's, that's right. Trying their hardest to make it work. They've had marginal success. Oh, oh. Well, a little bit of damage onto Pure. Okay. The problem with the no ward thing is that it actually really benefits KT here because they have the ability to check a lot of these brushes and they have the poke. Yeah. That is so they point. don't have to face check anything. Meanwhile, Najin needs to engage at some point, and they could face check into a lot of upfront burst right. damage. You know, looks like he's coming from the side here. Is he going to be able to get a good Cladicism off OQ, trying to do some damage, but can't quite do it. I feel like they maybe could have engaged there. What do you think? I think uh, Peanut, oh, barely gets into that pit. The Raptor pit. I honestly think Peanut can engage whatever he wants right now. Yeah, really. I don't know why he's uh, being so hesitant. They, they do have a lot of ability, so you have to engage onto the right target. Well, he had a good opportunity there, though. You have to have that follow-up coming in from uh, Duke. Yeah, is I think the real issue here, and with the amount of mobility and Fixer with the monsoon to blow him out of the cataclysm. There may not be enough follow-up fast enough. Really, I do think Najin is going to have to split push this, because KT can just kite them around all day at this point. So just go ahead and split up and wave clear with the Karthus, and if necessary, also the Callista. But yeah. Duke should be starting to think about going into a side lane. Once he gets the teleport back up, he is down compared to someday at the moment. But I think if Najin hugs their towers, at the moment, they can still push even without the teleport I'm thinking this being available. I think this one's going to be a Najin win at between 45 to 50 minutes or a KT win at 60 minutes plus. <laughs> okay. One of the two. One of the two. The thing is, we have two teams that really aren't the greatest in the late game. And so, where do you go from there, you know? Somebody bought Majais. He sure did. Uh, I suppose if you're desperate for a snowball, but that is really risky against Karthus, who can finish you off even after the team fight is over and you've won. Oh, he could have finished the Zonius too. All right. Or, yeah, yeah, yeah could have finished the Zonius. Although 450 is the goal for the upgrade to Zonius. So you get that actually pretty quickly. Yeah. It's not, you don't have to wait for a long time in order to combine the recipe. So Najin setting up once more. Oh. Right around this Baron pit, but they can't really reasonably God, threaten it. Oh, they caught something for a moment. There we go. There's a decent Cataclysm. I'll use right away, though. Najin still piling on to KT. Tank does go down, but it's Karthus. It's okay. OQ doing a lot of damage here. Meanwhile, it looks like Ezreal tried to come back in, but there's a double for Duke. KT on the run now. Tank doing some decent damage with the ult. It was a two for three trade. In favor of. KT at the end of the day there. Yeah, that Monsoon from Fixer did a lot of work right there. Pretty yeah, much did. all he had to do is hit R, and that bought Najin, or uh, KT rather, a lot of time in order to get auto attacks in onto the relatively squishy composition of Najin. Of course, Duke is getting tankier and tankier, yep. but even so, it is problematic. They have to split push right now, and Najin needs to recognize their win condition, because if we look at the straightforward engage, yes, they catch someday right here, but they eat a ton of damage from the True Shot Barrage. There's the engage from Peanut, but Tank isn't there to follow up really right away. He, wow, Tank like awkwardly flashed in the middle of that fight too. He loses a lot of damage over the course of this fight, does go down. Not a great positioning up top as well, able to focus fire the Karthus and remove him from yep. the equation and slow his engage as well with the help of that Iceborne Gauntlet, so uh, Nogne did good work. It's going to be five dragons for Najin if they can take this one. KT needs to stop them right here. A lot of ultimates down for both sides here. Najin trying to take the dragon two shot. Braz used, and it will be taken. That's five now for Najin. They're going to engage immediately on this. Nice play from here. They bring Arrow in. That's a kill. That's going to benefit Najin quite a bit. Peanut flashing out. A double kill already for Duke now. Two members down for KT. And Najin's going to turn right onto this Baron, that fifth dragon really doing work. Yep, and KT in big trouble now. They may have won that last team fight, but they're set to lose the war. Duke going after a Blade of the Ruined King next, too, wow. just because of the amount of sustain. And he really does need the extra CC to kite people out here. But yeah. he, he set that all up with a really good equalize it, uh, equalizing strike. Uh, equilibrium strike, excuse me. 
and that allowed Pol uh, Pure to follow up with a flash play. And they got the engage they needed at long last, and now they'll be able just to power through. Yeah, Duke all over Nagne. There's a nice wild growth, though. Can they turn this one around? They do get a kill. Turret does go down, and wow, Requiem doing a lot of work there for Nagin. Will it be enough to help them claim this inhibitor, though? The empowered minions doing quite a bit of damage. Arrow and score trying to do it, but they can't save the inhibitor, so Najin will back off successfully. Duke is kind of laughing after that one. He's like, OQ went too far forward again. Ha ha ha. Yep. He's like, oh, OQ. <laughs> and yeah, it uh, throws the thresh in right there, but there's so much peel thanks to the Lulu. And so they are able just to auto the 80 carry to death because Najin was split right there. Half of them were still going after this inhibitor. So yeah, OQ well. and Pure getting a bit antsy right there. OQ grabbing Pure and Pure deciding, well, to hell with it. I guess I'll just follow through with this engage. I mean, the thing is, anyone who's had a Callista on your team, it means that your team is always equipped to throw. All right, OQ back to his Warmogs. He is Wung 2.0. Nice. Except he wins lane. <laughs> <laughs> he's also not arcane shifting into team fights too. No, he's uh, just you know Callista hopping, Callista hopping right Callista into in. team fights. Callista. I, they did get the inhibitor, so in the end, it's not all bad. Najin still retains yeah. that pressure, but well, they, another they do. another late game foolish death from OQ. I mean, they lose a Baron buff and a five dragon buff on him, so that's not the greatest. I'm just waiting for somebody to Photoshop that OU meme into <laughs> OQ, so, OQ, so we can use it every time that he uh, just suicides in the late game. I'm sure, someone will now. It'll be glorious. <laughs> Duke just kind of hanging out. He's like, I've still got all my buffs. I'm the tanky one. I'm the one who goes in. And there goes another inhibitor turret. Najin. Looking to take their second inhibitor here. Well, good luck, Peanut. <laughs> now they're finally split pushing. This is what they should have been doing for most of this time instead of attempting to group or bait the Baron, which they really couldn't threaten legitimately anyway. Oh. Score <laughs> wants to fight some empowered minions and Peanut. All right, then. Yeah, they're not really going to be able to stop this. Someday's going to get just chased down by Duke right here. Yeah. Uh, Duke taking a bit of damage here, but now OQ comes in, helps him finish off that inhibitor turret. There we go. They finally figured out the right combination of players in order to make this split push work. Yeah. Oh, no. Tank. Karthus. Juke like your life depends on it. Zonia's and deep. Oh, he dodges the rocket. Oh, gets taken out though by Ezreal. Nagne does go down though. Requiem coming in. And what's the damage gonna be? It's gonna be huge. Double kill for OQ after that one. There goes inhibitor number three, and this game is about over. He's OQ going gets for it again. He's doing it. He's OQing. <laughs> He's gonna be able to help Dude, pick up the kill though. Thanks to his war box. That's right. Wow. May the wound be with you. <laughs> Duke getting a bit low. Thank goodness for GA. There's a nice knockup onto Score. Wild Growth, though, knocks up OQ in response. And someday on Score, the last men standing. And will the Ren do it? Oh, OQ decided he had to die one last time. <laughs> and can they actually end here now that OQ's dead? I don't I don't know. <laughs> they can't. Oh, OQ. <laughs> wah, wah. OQ just That's, sitting there. He's like, yeah, <laughs> sorry, guys. <laughs> Five to ten more minutes of game time now. Silly me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you, you scamp, oh, you, you rascal, you scallywag. It's funny up until he actually loses games like this, which has happened. I know, it's, it's funny this game, but oh, Duke. Oh, I don't, oh, Duke. I don't think he wants to fight that. Oh, okay. All right. I don't know what he thought he was going to get done there. I don't know. He knew that he was going to have higher HP and so would just get equilibrium struck. Yeah, well, he's like, well, don't worry. If I fight this Aurelia, it's not like she's going to be gaining health by hitting me or, you know, I don't know, is tanky or has a Randuin's. Or a... Uh, yeah, or, or a Warmog's. Or a blade. Ninja Tabby. I'll just keep auto-attacking. I got this. That's Leeson. Maybe he didn't know who was, he was attacking. He thought, it was, he thought it was a blue buff. That's what happened. He just thought it was a blue buff. I get it. Always assume the best. You know, the amazing thing about this game, though, is score is still two, 
two, two one, one and ten. That was his first death. <laughs> You're having a great and time. And Nadne has actually had a very good game as well. He's really turned a lot of these fights around. His skill shot accuracy has been quite good. He's done in whatever the team he can. fights. It's if someday an arrow and fixer hadn't been so thoroughly dominated oh, in they the late two phase, shot barrage. Yeah, <laughs> smart. Yeah. In the laning phase, this would have been a very different game because about half of KT's team is playing really well, and they did drag it out. I will say for KT, they knew the kind of fights that they wanted, and they took them in the late game, even with that massive deficit, while Najin seemed a little bit confused about the ideal way to play out their team composition yep. and their lead. Oh, Beanup going deep. They're going to try to catch Arrow again. They do after the Valkyrie and the Cataclysm. Nice double play onto Arrow and Fixer. That is a dead bot lane for KT Rolster. Now they're going to go after score. He's going to go down. There's a triple kill for OQ. Requiem comes in. And it's no dream. It's only a nightmare for KT. GG and Najin takes a pretty convincing game one up until they got lazy and kind of threw a little <laughs> bit, but then came back and win anyway. Typical Najin game. <laughs> Typical Najin OQ. game indeed. Indeed. Yep. Someday OQ will learn his limits in the late game and not try and YOLO it, but he's until kinda, that day. He's got a bit of imp in him, doesn't he? <laughs> yep. I see a bit of imp going on there. Still, another impressive laning phase of this Callista, showing that it oh, probably yeah. should be banned up right. against him. And Think of the same thing, yep. Duke shows up today, had a disappointing series against SK Telecom, but responds by exacting sweet, sweet vengeance against Sunday.